Good evening. Hello, everybody. My name is Andre Rodriguez. I'm from Guayaquil, Ecuador. And this available job about the inter teacher's interview is already done to perform um, teacher's training, academics, and also uh, exchanging ideas. So that's why we already invited to step in teacher. She is a friend of mine. Uh, she's a commitment professional, and I have been with her in the in different sessions, especially in the co teacher program, uh, for about ten years ago. Uh, Master Angelica Naranjo, where uh, I politely call her Angie. Okay, Miss Angie, more than a pleasure to have you here. How are you tonight? I'm so good, Andresito. Thank you for inviting me here to this section. Just, I would love to share a little bit about my professional development. Um, just, I usually say, uh, thanks God, because I I have met a lot of good people in my way. One of them is you. Thank you, Andresito. Okay. So uh, let me speak a little bit about me. As I told you before about me, um, it was just when I was very, very young. My, in my town, a lot of people just, they like um, to have a lot of children in order to work in as a farmers in the agriculture. However, I have a very wise father that he decided that all of us, in my family, I can study at least the secondary to finish the secondary, and it was my case. And I I could finish my secondary at Leon Royales High School in Mira. It was the the first step in order to continue my professional development. After that, I had the chance uh, to go to Ibarra. Ibarra is close to Mira. And I started to work and study at the same time. So I was studied a lot. And uh, I consider I did my best in order to graduate. And I graduated from North Technical University as, a, as an English teacher. And it was, I, I think I consider that it was my best decision because I love to be a teacher. So I'm so happy now to, to have that decision because um, I had a lot of options. However, I decided to that to do that. However, some years after, in I remember it was in, uh, in 2009 that I graduated from university and I started uh, working at Leon Rollins Fisk Commissional Educational Unit as a teacher and. Um, it was like a, just a contract, but I did it my best in order to work, to did it, to did it, to start it as a teacher working. But I felt that it was, as I told you before, my best decision. I work with the teenagers, also with children, and uh, I felt so happy. However, when I was working at the same school, I applied to a master or uh, to a scholarship that was from the Ministry of Education. And um, at the beginning, it was difficult because uh, it was uh, just a group of four, 60 teachers from all of Ecuador. But I thought that I was not in that group. So I got married and I had a baby. However, uh, when my baby had only six months, uh, I received one call from Senesit that said, you had the, the, the scholarship, you, you are the winner. So just what you have to do is send the information. At that time, I, I didn't know how to do because I remember I started to study the master's degree. I had a baby from six months, but uh, as usually my father said, oh, don't worry because you can do it. 
is uh, we grew some children and we can do it with yours too. So go ahead, go to USA and do it. The opportunities just come once and go once. So decided and I decided to go. So I had the opportunity to go to Kansas State University in USA in the program Go Teacher. So it was probably the best decision in my life, I specifically speaking about my professional development, because with that, I can do with everything. But that, uh, before to go to the scholarship, I had only contract and I didn't know if I had a work or not. But after that, uh, I'm gonna have more opportunities. My father said, go ahead, you do, can do it. So I decided to do it over there. I had a lot of opportunities to do it over there in, in USA. You know, because you had the same chance, uh, Andresito. So we shared the same, the same experience, and we were we went to USA. As usually, I participate in all of the different events. We have some different um, chances to participate in and demonstrate how is Ecuador, and uh, we dance. We showed our music. And um, we participate in different religious groups. And the most important, we have the chance for meeting all of wonderful people from all of it. So it was great because we could develop also our, our skills, you know. So we felt specifically, we, we lived in the real life, in, the, in, in their culture. So we could feel how the how is living in a, a specific place like USA. So I think I consider, especially in my professional development, it was the best opportunity. So after that, I came to Ecuador and I I started then working a, in an, a public school that I is El Angel Educational Unit and I keep working here. It was because at the beginning I had a contract, but because I had the scholarship, I could did it here. I usually do my best because it's the place like my second home. I share with my a lot of people here that I like my family, oh, the students that I try to do my, my best with them. I sh I I think it all of people that are here. I like my second family, so I feel so happy here working. I can do a lot of a lot of different things here. After that, I I continue working on my master degree with it, where I I had the opportunity to 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 meet a lot of wonderful people like Mario that is here and also a lot of very good people. Uh, I, it was not just the first time I did the twi three times that I had to go to that university because of the first trip that I had to go to UNES USA and I, I had to leave my studies. However, I keep studying, kept studying until I can I could have my master degree in linguistics. Mm? It was wonderful. I could remember my some of my best friends that I have here, uh, some of the meetings that I have here also. I had to do a lot of different activities. I had learned a lot of in the Catholic university. I say thanks to that because I could have my master degree. It was not just once, as I told you before, I have change different uh, classmates because uh, I had to go to USA and, and I came again, but I did it. I think it was one of the best opportunities. However, um, I was working at the same school at the public school. And uh, I remember there was one option 
that I consider also in my life was a good opportunity because it was uh, seed best practices in this all in Quito that was prepared for the EL embassy and the USA embassy. It was a meeting in Quito where a lot of uh, teachers from all of Ecuador decided to go and prepare for the different specific method, methods and strategies in which we can prepare in order to teach not only in, to our students, also teach teachers how to work in, around the public schools. So I remember we had to prepare the different classes in Quito. Also at the same time, we, uh, we have a very good and excellent people like Adeline and Justin, they, they are uh, very incredible people and facilitators that they, they teach, taught us how to teach different people, how to work with different people, specifically because they created the new modules for the Ministry of Education. And uh, now all of Ecuador, the public institutions are working with these modules. So it was wonderful because we had the chance for working with them, these people that they they taught us how to create. We were working on these different uh, methods uh, like ECRIF, PDP, and we work on the on different methods that we can that very useful. They are very useful in order to work with our students. So I apply them today, and I think is it was great because I could have also the chance to meet a lot of people from all of Ecuador, teachers, public teachers from all of Ecuador. And we can have uh, that connection in order to know what is happening here in Ecuador. So working at here and my institution, Langel Educational Unit, I had the chance to apply to, to one scholarship and I can say thanks to the uh, uh, embassy, to the uh, USA embassy. They helped me, and they said that they were. I was part of the selection, and I could have another scholarship to go to Wilmington University in North Carolina. So it was the T Fulbright program. And this was for teachers, for working. Oh, it was like oh. an incredible opportunity, amazing opportunity to uh, my professional development, specifically because uh, a lot of teachers, not only from Ecuador, the first time was having uh, teachers from all of Ecuador, but the second time was having teacher around the world. So I could meet teachers from all of the world and they were from the public institutions. So it was amazing because all of them were telling how is the education, English education in their, in their schools. So I could feel so I could identify some similarities, differences from different countries, and I could compare how is our education. Also in that place, I could meet a lot of wonderful people, people from other countries that probably they, they share how is their culture. Also, I could have the opportunity to teach our culture, Ecuadorian culture, how is all of Ecuador? I think Ecuador is wonderful. So I could share that to a lot of people, a lot of teachers from all around the world. So I could share also some classes to some public schools at USA. It was, wow, uh, an experience that I, incredible experience, a wonderful experience. So 
I could found uh, find a lot of people that were very very nice, very polite, and I say always nothing is just what I did. It is an experience that we want to do, and if we can dream it, we can do it. So it was what I did it, and I tried to do. Oh, an experience as much as I could have when I was at USA in the second time, especially because I was with oh, teachers like me in Ecuador. I can say here, uh, because I had a professional development at USA, also the seed best uh, um, as a TESOL practices, I had the opportunity here. You know, in Ecuador, we have one program that is excellent for public teachers that is called Ecuador Habla Inglés. This Ecuador Habla Inglés program is around Ecuador, but this program is trying to help a lot of teachers to develop their, first of all, their skills, all of their skills. Also, uh, to know how the different methodologies work. And additional to that, uh, we can have uh, we can uh, work in the different modules that we are working on here in all of Ecuador. So I feel so happy to to be a, a facilitator of, of these public teachers. So I work all every every day with this program, and it is online, but. Sometimes I say online is online, it's only on faith, on the computer. However, working probably with the computer is not only the computer, it is meeting people from around all Ecuador. So it's a wonderful opportunity to meet people also in all around Ecuador, also teachers and uh, share to them the experiences that I had learned with uh, some wonderful people, as I told you, Adeline and Justin. So um, I feel so happy to be part of this group, of this team, because I, I feel that uh, a lot of teachers are working so hard in order to get the B2, to also to work with the different modules, and trying to improve Ecuadorian education. That is our goal. If we can improve Ecuadorian education, it can be the best. Because, you know, we, we're, we're checking that the, uh, the Ministry of Education is not, is not doing what we want. So what can we do is Teachers, teachers, can we do our best in order to improve Ecuadorian education? Mm -hmm. Additional to that, today I work here at my institution, El Angel Educational Unit, and also at Pusesi University as teacher. I usually work with open courses with the it is kind of children's university. They usually prepare some uh students in order to get certifications in order to go to the university and when they go to university they had B2 so what is the purpose is they don't have to continue studying at the university English because they had studied before in advance they took their time in order to do so these courses are wonderful so all of the different teachers Try, are trying to work with the front children from three years until adolescents that are kind of 18 years old. So it depends on what they want, but their purpose is, uh, is improve their English and going ahead with that. So, and keep Today, as I told you before, I keep working here at my institutional Angel Educational Unit. And um, this is like my second family. And I can tell you that according to my professional development, I have learned uh, specific things that I can, can, can help me and maybe can help you too, because they are building a positive 
an effective learning environment, I consider that is the most important because if you find here three specific topics that, uh, that you can have in your professional development, specifically as professional, as teachers, first of all, is related to relationships. How can you work with everyone if you don't have good relationships? If you have your students like your friends, if, if they um, love you, they are gonna love your subject, they are not English. So the first important thing is create good relationships with students, students, teachers, also create good relationships, not only all of the community or with the other teachers, with the authorities. Ha remember that most of the time that we have, uh, we share here in our institutions. So if we can have good relationships, we feel so happy to go to our work. But can you imagine every day we have to go our job and you say, oh, I'm gonna find a person that I'm gonna meet, a person that I don't want to see. It just, I consider that if you can feel happy in your work, you're gonna feel that is like your home. So it's good thing, first of all, create good relationships. If the students see that you are a good person, see that you are a good teacher, they say, I want to study English. I want to be like him, like her. So I consider the relationship is the one of the most important things that we have as teachers. So I have learned that because of I have seen a lot of teachers around, not only Ecuador, around all of the world. Additional to that, I consider that it's important to check the resources that we have in our classroom. Please, it's necessary to work as differentiator and it's called folding. We don't know, not all of the students are in the same step, in the same way. We know they are all in the same lives. We don't know they have their own world. So it's necessary to identify how students work with themselves, what happened in their lives, what is, uh, how is, how is uh, their own world? So if the, we know that all of the students are different, we have to work with them in different way. We have to tell them how is, uh, and also understand what do they need in order to go step by step. It's very, very important to work with differentiation and also in scaffolding. Additional to that, we know we're teachers and every day we're gonna have similar, similar things in our classrooms. So it's important to establish things. When we work with things, I consider that all of the students, they know how you work and how they behave. So we can have any problems with uh, sometimes some teachers say, oh, I have some problems with troublemakers, but no, how can you have troublemakers in your classroom if you establish in routines? You know, students know how you work, how you do, and how you can develop the different classes. So they behave as you want. You are gonna be the facilitator, the leader in your classroom. So what you have to do is establish routines from the beginning until we end. So I consider these three things are the best in order you can have your best professional development, especially if you are a teacher. So here I can say it is in summary what I have done and uh, in my life as uh, Angelica Franjo, Angie, I can say something very important that I, 
you know, I love being a teacher. is a so is my passion. is my it was my dream, and I did it. And I am I'm so happy working. However, something that I I is part the best part of my life is my family, my three children, my parents, and something that I love doing like uh, playing soccer and singing that I consider it was good because everywhere in the different places that I was, I did it, I applied. It's what I say, it's what I can tell you about me. Oh, I say just thanks and I'm very open to, to any question that you can have and you can uh, tell me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, uh, dear Angie. Okay, so, well, uh, I will say that I'm so happy when I saw uh, photos that comes to my mind, especially when I traveled to, back to the time when I saw you in Kansas State, when I saw you in the set best practice for, for Tissol in Quito. Well, so many anecdotes and many thoughts comes to came to my mind and and well they are things that we remember no um my sincere and best wishes for your professional commitment and human support to your students and your valuable work okay in the different institutions where you work no in Langhell, in the university, at school, well, uh, I appreciate it if one of the partners here would comments, would say something or would congratulate me, Sanji, about uh, their performance, about their uh, success uh, that she has uh, shared with us. Okay, uh, dear teachers, this is the moment. Uh, good evening. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Robert. How are you? I'm just fine. Thank you, Teacher Andres, and thank you, Teacher Angelica, for this great presentation. Now we know you better, I think. And I, I have a question. Uh, can you can you tell us uh, something, or can you tell us more about any difficulties that you? that you had in your career and how did you manage them? Can you maybe share a bit about us, about it? Thank you. Yes, sure, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for nice to see you. Nice to meet you here. And um, yes, uh, you know, every day in, in our life, it's not so easy, really. So as I as I told you at the beginning, for me, it was very difficult because uh, I was one of the six children. And uh, my father said that just you have to do, uh, you can study only for, uh, he said you have to study because most of people here in my town, they usually had some, a lot of children in order to work as a farmer's and to help at home. However, as I told you, my father was very wise and he said he decided to, to send us to study. And um, it was a little difficult probably in, in, my, in, my, uh, in order to get my, my first degree because uh, I had to work and study at the same time. However, I consider myself I'm very, very hardworking because I did it. I studied. I I also work so hard and I could get my first degree at, as an English teacher. Additional to that, probably something that I remember and come to my mind that the, it was when I had to go to USA uh, to Kansas State University because I had the scholarship. It was something very difficult for me because oh, I had my baby and my baby only had six months. And I received a call 
and from Senesit said, you have to go to USA in one month, in August, and it was July. And uh, I said, oh my God, and my baby was only six months. How can I do it? And I was talking to my family, to my mom, to my father, and they said, uh, so dear, remember that opportunities. My father said that uh, opportunities comes only once. You take it or you leave them. So what you have to do? I can tell you just, my father said, go ahead, go, take it, because it's gonna be very good for your future profession. So do it, don't worry about your baby. But it was very, very difficult because can you imagine, my baby was only six months. And when I came back from USA, Mm, my baby was one and three months. It was like, oh, what? He doesn't remember that. But I, at the beginning, it was so hard because at the beginning, I, I was thinking of oh, reject the scholarship. However, my parents were my support. They told me, no, do it. Because in your life, you need it. You need to, to go ahead, to... Probably he, for me, I consider that it was the, mo the most difficult part for my professional development, but it was the most useful because of that, I came back and I could continue. Now I have my nombramiento because of that. So it was very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you teacher Angelica. Thank you. Thank you, thank you both, Robert and Miss Angie, for sharing with us. Uh, Mr. Carlos Aleman, Mr. Carlos, hello. Nice to see you here. Hello. Okay, well, um, another teacher good to participate with us and uh, would make a comment. Because I really have... Oh, well, uh, I have another question for okay, teacher yeah. Angelica, if it's possible. Um, my question is related to students. Uh, is uh, how do you help or what strategies do you use to help students uh, improve their speaking skills, listening or speaking practice? Uh, how do you do that? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your question, Robert. Yes. Um, First of all, as I told you, the most important part is creating good relationships with the students. Yes, when they are, they feel that you are like your friend, you feel kind, or uh, they want, they feel very, very open in order to learn. So when we are working on speaking activities, we, I usually try to look for realia, real things. So when we are working on, on, especially because we have the modules, I usually create different things from the real life. If we are working, for example, with recipes, I told, I usually tell them, please uh, work with the, what's, what's the real favorite food that you like? How do you prepare it? What is the process? Additional to that, also, I create, uh, if you can consider it and you look for the different listenings that we have in the modules, they are also related to the real life that we have here in Ecuador. I usually also prepare different activities and games. I consider this is the most important because how you know, students like to play. If you prepare games, they love the, the subject and they are gonna feel very, very well. So I usually check what is the topic and prepare a good game in order they they can feel good 
and they are going to be very, with the affective filter down and they are going to feel very well in order to learn, to learn English. I think games can be the best way in order they can develop their skills. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Robert. Uh, Mr. Carlos, Mr. Carlin Alemán. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, Mr. Good, good evening. Nice to see you. Howdy. Would you greet? Would you would you ask something about uh, to Miss Angie about I'm trying to see you the interview in this kind of a ex experience? Okay. But I I I know that you you know some problems here in Babura. And sorry, Mr. <laughs> sorry everybody, I cannot. I cannot own my some microphones, but now I good. I good know something about the the experience about the Miss Angelica Naranjo. I know that you you work like a a trainer for the Ecuador of Inglés. All right. Could you tell me your experience? How is it? Or how is it? I know that you are continuing working for the EA Ecuador of Inglés, right? Yes, sure. Thank you, Carlos. For Which level are you are you working now? Which uh, level? As I told you before, it was uh, one part of my professional development when I had the opportunity to get the scholarship to prepare for seed best diesel practices in Quito. Oh, okay. It was the first group in 2019, and it was before the pandemic. Do you remember that it was yeah. after the pandemic? So sometime it was the first group, and I tried to do my best. Oh. As usually, I went to that place, to Quito, and I met the two teachers, the facilitators. It was Adeline, oh, Adeline, it's one of the best facilitators that you can find. And we mm -hmm. we had a chance to learn all of the different methodologies. So after that, they, uh, they select different teachers from those different programs in order to go and be part of the, this Habla Inglés uh, professional development for teachers, public teachers. I feel so happy because I can meet teachers from all of Ecuador. They are, oh, how is my experience? I usually apply the different methodologies. Every day we have one hour class from four to 5 p.m. And we usually- Methodology only with it, it takes. Uh, this methodology is called related to uh, the different uh, skills, for example. ECRIF, ECRIF is a, yeah. a specific method for working for uh, speaking, uh, speaking like uh, vocabulary and grammar activities. And we have the different- But process. here in Ecuador, sorry, Miss, I here in Ecuador, I think, I think so that it is so difficult because you know, the difference level that a student has, the student have. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to work with uh, internet. It was in pandemic situation. Ecuador Habla Inglés is a program for teachers, public yeah, teachers. Yeah, for teachers, but you can apply it. You can apply it. Can it's technology with the students, yeah. You can apply. The teacher said it. You can apply. Yeah. How to do it? We know that the uh, students are not excellent for that reason. We are here in order to help them. But how is that? For that reason, we are learning different methods in order to help them to improve their skills. But Ecuador Habla Inglés is a program that helps teachers to know how to work with the different modules because you know the, we have different modules from the Ministry of Education and they are not so easy to work with them. So how to do it? It's, oh. It is because this 
the, the Ministry of Edu Education and also with the embassy, the USA embassy, is looking for preparing teachers for working and cope with these oh. specifically uh, modules to help students. I consider that oh. it's a good advantage because uh, teachers can come to this program for free. Who paid for this program is the uh, American Embassy. Additional to that, they receive the different um, evaluations also for free until the teachers can get the B2 level. Because the purpose of this program is help teachers to improve their skills, to get B2, and also to improve their skills in, in reading, writing, in order to teach and learn the different methods according to these methodologies that they are working on. Okay. Thank you, Miss. Thank you so Thank much, you. Miss Carlos, for, for asking and Miss Angie for sharing with us, okay? Um, I'm not sure if someone else would like to ask something. Um, well, well, in my last comment in this interview, well, I, I could say something that I, that I, um, appreciated the most, no? And, and, uh, and I think that a professional must be complete. Okay. Must be complete uh, in, in some, in, in very different phases of her uh, curriculum in preparation. But if we don't incorporate values, if we don't incorporate it um, in our in our um, in our curriculum, different aspects of humanistics, I think that that's not that is not going to work so well. Because before we we work on being professionals, we need we need to be work we need to work on being uh, good human beings, and uh, and I appreciated that for Angie because I, I met her, and and I know some uh, some of you too, dear colleagues. So, as uh, our mission in in our institutions is to not only to work okay and teaching and go ahead with that, uh, we need to transform and make it possible and make and touch people's life, no, as teachers we are. So uh, individually, if you work in a public institution, in a in a university, or you work in a in a in an ESL or EFL academy or any work, you can, can do it. So what we have to do is to remember that we we have the uh, the commitment we can do it with passion. Okay. Well, um, I don't know, uh, Mr. Hello, Mr. Mario Garces. Good evening. Thanks for being here. Okay. Well, um, in this last part of the uh, of the presentation of the interview, let me uh, require you to open the cameras because I would like to have a last picture for the. Uh, uh, for saying goodbye. Hello, Veronica. How are you? Good okay. evening. Just fine. Where are you from, Veronica? I'm from La Concordia, Ecuador. Okay, great. Okay, we're from different part of Ecuador, but from Peru too. And well, so uh, the idea of, of of sharing this uh, in teachers uh, interview is globalizing so to to support to help people for different part of the world and learn from the others that inspire us okay well so you. you're welcome okay in this moment i'm going to uh, take the picture okay everybody smile okay Great. Okay, I hope, dear Angie, that is not going to be the, the the last time that you can be with us. I 
fortunately expect that you you could uh, share with us another teacher's interview or if you would like to uh, to share with us any topic in a teacher's development professional it could it, you are here you're more than welcome thank you Angie I just would like to say, Andresito, thank you, because um, it was a great opportunity to meet you also in in USA, because we met there. And I remember the time when I, uh, we had the chance, we were going to the gym, we were playing soccer, because, you know, I love it too. And uh, I was one of the, the only one who played soccer of the ladies, so... Yeah. And I was in your team and we, we, we were playing. And I remember also in USA uh -huh. that uh, all of the teachers, there were a lot. And having a, a haircut, it was very expensive. And do you remember I cut all of the teachers' hair? It was like I was not uh, the professional, but I tried to do my best because uh, you were like uh, brothers all of you Ecuadorians and in USA, a lot of American people. So a lot of good um, different experiences that I had in USA came to my mind when I was preparing this presentation. Really, I appreciate uh, to you to give me the opportunity to be here. And also thank you, Andresito, because you're very so kind. And uh, when you came also to Quito, uh, you had some chance in order to come here and we could meet, you could, they uh, came and, you know, uh, and uh, it's, uh, I'm from Karchi, you know, everyone here. And uh, I feel so happy that you can visit my place over here. And thanks, thanks Andresito for giving me this chance for sharing this, this uh, information with uh, some of good teachers here. Thank you for joining also to this interview. No, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It my, it's my honor to have you here, dear Angie, as you mentioned. So more than colleagues, we became friends at first. And uh, I, I was completely sure the first moment that, uh, that, I, that I was thinking of you before I invited, to inviting you. I imagined that it would be a great... Uh, uh, teachers interview because of the different memories, anecdotes, and things that we have shared. And well, dear colleagues, thank you so much for uh, sharing with us this wonderful teachers interview, especially because uh, it's a little bit late. It's an unusual time, but thanks anyway. Thanks for being here. And I hope to invite you for the next teachers interview. I will let you know. Have a good night, everybody. Take a good rest. Bye-bye. was a pleasure. Bye-bye.